You're flying illegally if you do this. Have you ever seen this warning screen? Did you just click the check boxes and then hit OK? Maybe just like everybody else, you didn't read them fully and don't understand the details. But in this case, most importantly, do you have your drone license? If you first gave two yeses and then a no, it's likely you were flying illegally. Before I go on, just a reminder to hit the like button if you like the video and don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this. So there are several different warning screens, but the reason this particular warning screen exists is to tell pilots in Canada with their advanced RPAS certificate that this is an area where you should be in direct contact with a tower cab. That's because it's an area where air traffic can be in a drone's normal operating altitude, which creates a high potential to cause a collision. This type of area is almost always inside an aerodrome within about one to three kilometers of an airport and on the approach, but can also be for heliports or other important areas such as water aerodromes and more. There are also many aerodromes where you wouldn't really think they would be, such as in a rural area or even in a farmer's field, but it's actually an aerodrome. There are a ton of little aerodromes around Manitoba. I always check the map for the area where I fly and I'm often surprised where I'm flying is in or at least near an aerodrome. So this prompt screen also exists to tell basic pilots as well as unlicensed pilots such as those flying micro drones or uh, toy drones to stay out of this area. The checkbox I am qualified to fly in this area statement directly reflects that. Both pilots with their basic certificate and smaller drones shouldn't fly in these areas because they can't be in direct contact with the tower cab and there's almost always a high level of air traffic in these areas. Remember, drone pilots with a basic certificate can't legally fly in an aerodrome. And Transport Canada states the best practice for micro and toy drones should be to stay far away from any aerodrome, airport, and so on. That was part of a previous Dan's Did You Know? Go check it out for more information on my Instagram. But just a quick recap on the main difference between basic and advanced licenses. Pilots with their basic license aren't allowed to fly in an aerodrome, whereas pilots with their advanced licenses can. If you have a basic license and don't know what an aerodrome is, you should definitely do more studying to make sure you're flying safely. If you're just flying for fun out in the countryside, a basic license is actually perfect as long as you always check the aerodrome maps. But if you're inside a city or any aerodrome, it's super important to have that knowledge to really understand the aviation industry so you can fly safely. Both London Heathrow and Gatwick airports have actually been fully shut down because of a drone operating within this type of area. It has also happened in Canada, but without causing a full shutdown, just some rerouting. However, whenever it does happen, it's a serious incident for the airport and both people in the UK and Canada have been arrested and successfully prosecuted for this. Now, since no one ever reads those terms of use agreements before they just click the check boxes and hit okay on those warning screens, I'll post a bit about it here. Part of DJI's usage agreement states, you shall assume full responsibility for the safety of your flight operations, including obtaining any necessary authorization from government authority. So authorization from government authority means for Canadians having your drone license. Now, as a specific example of the type of area where I see that confirmation screen pop up is at Assiniboine Park. I've flown three times in the last two months at Assiniboine Park and as an advanced RPS pilot, in order to fly there or in any of those areas where those messages pop up, here's what I've got to do. First of all, I need to file a flight plan, which includes things like my working area, max working height, and then the date and then the length of time I'll be flying. Then I wait an average of between 12 to 24 hours to have my flight approved. What's literally happening in that time to have a flight approved is it goes through the Prairies FIC, which is in Edmonton, and then to the CYWG, which is actually the Winnipeg uh, area tower. There are many areas where I fly where I get automatic approval immediately after I file my flight plan, but those areas uh, that I get that in are a lot less volatile and are less likely to have air traffic at my operating altitude. So after my flight is approved, I go out on the day that I want to fly and I set up my takeoff and landing area. As both a basic or advanced RPAS pilot, you're legally obligated to set up a takeoff and landing area. Then about 15 minutes before I do my pre-flight inspection, I call the tower, confirm my flight area and max operating height, flight plan and any other details they request. Then after they confirm all that, I can legally go fly. Remember, going through all those steps is super important. If you're not doing that, it's very likely you're flying illegally. If you're a basic or an advanced pilot, please feel free to contact me by email or through an Instagram or Twitter DM as I regularly consult with people to make sure they're flying 100% legally. It's way smarter than risking a collision. 
Fly smart, fly safe, and ask questions if you don't know. Thanks for watching. If this video informed you even a bit, hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe for more tips, tricks, and legality stuff like this as I'm putting more and more up of them on my YouTube channel now.